Hello. So now I'm going to be discussing what is often called the tertiary function, also called the child function by Beebe, and what I often called the mobilizing function or hidden agenda. Now, what is this function about? Well, let's look at our diagram. And you'll see that in the diagram, it is now in the third row down, not the first row. Now, in a four function model, you'll give it the third position. But what I would actually say is this actually belongs in the sixth position. If you have an eighth function model and you've got very clear rules for how it's actually ordered and sorted. So why do I put it down there? Well, the third row is what we call the super id block. What is the super id block? Well, the idea is it retains, like the ego block, this idea being valued. It is egocentric. It is something which we appreciate and like. However, unlike the ego block, the super id block is not strong. It is actually weak. It is an area in which we are actually not very good. We are unable to take this information and apply it to brand new circumstances or unfamiliar circumstances. And by being something which we apply to unfamiliar circumstances uh, and aren't able to do so properly, we are likely to encounter failure in this area. Now, the thing is, if something is um, something which you value, but you fail in, it would make sense that it would no longer be a public facing thing. It's not something you'd really want to show in front of others so much because it's something which you care about, but you're not good at. It's a place where you may feel a great deal of insufficiency and a loss of self-esteem. So this is actually a private block, not a public block. And what I would suggest is that if you think of these top two blocks as being public blocks and these bottom two blocks as being private blocks, it all starts to make a bit more sense. So up here is the public facing stuff. Down here is the private facing stuff. So when we talk about the mobilizing function or the tertiary, right, it is something which is private, not public. It is not something which we're going to be marketing out so much, though you will still be able to see it in others. It's not that it's it's away from view. It's just not how we frame our interactions with society, with the world outside of ourselves. That's the key thing. So another thing you may also notice, last thing here is that it is number six as opposed to number five. So it's not the first number in its block. It is not unlike the leading function setting the need. It is actually responding to a need. It is fulfilling a need. Now, that means that when we cover the inferior function later, we'll find that's actually in a number before the mobilizing. So there are a few things here which are interesting and a bit confusing to talk about. But essentially, this mobilizing function or tertiary function is there to sort of fulfill a need. It is the, oh, look, I can do this. I can get this thing done. I can fulfill this need very effectively. And that's the idea. The mobilizing function is essentially a function which wants to be like the leading function. It wants to be, um, doesn't necessarily want to be the boss. In the way, the leading function actually is the boss, but it wants to show, look, I can do this. I can take charge of this. I can make this thing happen. And so it kind of behaves rather like a leading function. It is an assertive kind of a function. It is going to be quite stubborn in how it do, does things. It's going to have quite a lot of energy directed towards it. It's actually going to show up quite a bit, despite actually being a, a private function. Um, and essentially, this is where we have our aspirations. This is where we would like to be, be better at something, but we're actually not. And sometimes we can get a bit carried away with ourselves in thinking we're actually better than we are. 
And inevitably, we then slip up quite embarrassingly in front of others. And that can take a hit, we cause take a hit to our self-esteem. So the idea of being like a child makes a lot of sense. It is like that sort of young fellow who thinks he's really good at this thing, is quite like to brag about it, but actually he's not as good as he thinks he is, and he does quite poorly, and then he actually loses his confidence quite a lot, takes a hit, and has to rebuild that confidence over time. So that's what the mobilizing function is really about. And it's really serving the needs of the inferior function, which we'll talk about later. So, yeah, it, it this because it is so much like the leading function in terms of a dominant function in terms of its approach being assertive rather than collaborative. Um, it's not just there to flex and and um, and and serve in a professional way. It's more like, no, I can do this. I'll end up taking charge of it all, which is kind of inappropriate for the block. The idea is that the function, which is the lower number, say the dominant function, that one's meant to be the boss, not the next one along. The mobilizing function should not be the boss. And the same with the creative function or the auxiliary function is not the boss. Yet it acts like it is. And by doing that, it sets itself up for failure. So, yeah, that's one of the difficulties with the mobilizing function. But a phenomenon that's caused by this is where you have someone who, when you, when you look at them, you see the leading function and you see the mobilizing function. But as I described before, the creative function, right, that is not so easily seen. It's quite subtle. It has less energy directed to it, actually less energy directed to it than the mobilizing function. It has almost too much energy to actually handle itself properly. So that can lead to what some people like to call the dom turt loop, where, say, an ENTP you may see they're using NE, and you can see some FE, but you can't see any TI. Well, the point is the TI is actually there. You just have to, you're just not looking at it correctly. The TI is still there. It's just flavoring the leading function. It is meant to be there. It's just not drawing attention to itself in the way that the leading or the dominant and the mobilizing or the tertiary tends to. Um, it doesn't act in that sort of look at me way in a way that the dominant and the mobilizing or the dominant and the tertiary tend to do. So what people... Basically, people have confused um, as seeing something which is very assertive and big and attention grabbing as actually being some kind of, well, being caught up in these two things and not doing enough of the creative or auxiliary function. That's wrong. The auxiliary function is still working. It's just not drawing attention to itself. It's still competent. The person won't muck up in their in, in an area which requires their auxiliary function. They're just not drawing nearly as much attention to it. So yeah, I don't believe in dom turt loops. I think that is the wrong interpretation of what's going on. And that's people essentially applying this criteria that you need to see it very obviously for it to be used and, and mistaking that for, oh, if you can't see it very clearly, it's not being used at all. No, it still have that flavor. And the ENTP will still use extroverted intuition differently from the NFP because of the creative function playing that role. It's just that the mobilizing function shows up a lot more than the creative function. It shows up a bit more obviously and overtly when it is used. That's not to say it is used all the time. This is another key difference. The reason why this can be perceived in some types, but not with some examples of a type, but not others, is because the mobilizing function is not consistently on all the time. It activates in certain circumstances, whereas the leading function is consistently on. And when it activates, it doesn't actually draw from the creative function. This is the misconception. It draws from something else, which we'll cover later in our series. But essentially, yes, the mobilizing function is something which, when it does activate, when you suddenly see it, yes, it's going to look a lot bigger and more obvious than your creative function. And so people are going to think there's a dom turt loop when actually there isn't. And when you see that, it's not a bad thing because people think this dom turt loop is a sort of very bad thing, which is unhealthy. Wrong. Could not be more wrong. The mobilizing function is activated shows that the person is confident, that they are growing into those aspects which are valued, but which are not strong 
and they're getting better at them. So this is growth. This is not a negative, nasty cycle or loop. It is a good thing, and they haven't lost or subsumed their creative or auxiliary function in the process. That's still there. They are, um, so the Dom Turt loop is a pathologization of what actually is normal in someone who is healthy and is growing. And that is essentially all we have to say about the mobilizing function. It is, yeah, this area which you can get a bit too confident, you can muck up in, you can slip up in public, and then you lose your confidence in it. But it is also the area in which you are most likely to want to grow and develop yourself because you value it, you want to get better at it, and maybe you won't be so insufferable the next time you try. So yes, the first time you try it, of course, you're going to be quite insufferable. It's going to look a bit ridiculous to the external observer when you're trying to use this thing, which you're doing for your own sense of self-esteem. It's, it's still private, not public. But yes, over time, with more experience, you could actually get better at it. You still won't be strong. You still won't be able to apply it to completely new situations. But in familiar situations, it can get good enough. You may confuse it for a leading function. So yes, I hope that helps. And I'll cover the inferior function next.